Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, on this very brisk Christmas afternoon, I'm out here working on the Ratty Saddy, and the mission today is to get the 440 yanked out of this car, get it up on the stand, get it torn down, and praying to sweet six pound, five ounce, sweet baby Jesus, that uh, we do not have any major issues with this engine. Because in the last episode, you guys saw we tore down the 383, found out that thing needs a ton of work. Our 500 stroker kit just doesn't have enough time to come to light. And uh, yeah, I don't want to say the 440 is the last resort because I agree with you guys. Probably should have been the first place that we invested time and money into this thing. Um, but this thing's also got issues. So this engine came out of a 73 motorhome. It's very low compression. <laughs> needing a rebuild i want to say these things rated stock around 280 horsepower or so um but uh yeah it's got fuel delivery issues it's got big time transmission issues um it's also got a very weak ass cam in it you know and whether it was the gas tank sucking air or if it's the cam lobe on the fuel pump that is completely uh rounded off either way this engine's not getting enough fuel to make it down the drag strip as you guys saw in the video from tucson so yeah, we're gonna get this thing yanked out, get it up on the stand, torn down, and hopefully we don't have any major issues. Because to be honest with you guys, the rest of the car is really coming along pretty sweet. Um, you guys saw we got the interior stripped out, the floors in it look absolutely cherry. We also got our 410 rear end put in it, we got our slicks on it, we got our quarter panels rolled. We do have a little bit of metal work, but I really do think that we'll get it done in one episode. And that'll be just the trunk pan, the roll cage. And we're also gonna rebuild these door hinges because I think this door drops about two inches when you open it up. <laughs> so we're gonna fix that as well in a future episode. But man, I'm excited, I'm nervous, but I'm gonna say my prayers and hopefully it'll all turn out all right. But let's, uh, let's get this hood off and let's get this engine yanked out of this car. All right, you guys, we're gonna jump ahead just a little bit here, and the engine is essentially ready to pull out of this engine bay. Now, I already have the transmission out of the car. Let's take a quick look at that, but we know this thing's toast. It's completely stuck in gear, and uh, yeah, I don't know what we did to it. It was full of fluid. I know that because it was completely covering my floor over here, but uh, assuming this is all stock RV parts here, but uh, yeah, I think about the only thing we're gonna rob off of it is the shifter arm that we'll need for the B&M gated shifter, but we'll simply just transfer that over onto the newly rebuilt, hopefully good, <laughs> 727. So as you guys can see here, we have everything pretty much disconnected, taken off. I did have to leave the headers in place. Reason being is that the fitment is so damn tight in there and they're, they're, they use head studs to install those. And so I can't get the studs out um, specifically on the passenger side. The driver's side, those of you guys running headers know how tight the fitment is around the steering box in here. And a lot of times the directions will actually call for lifting the engine up about an inch just to get the headers to squeeze in there. So yeah, we'll lift it up and uh, hopefully be able to drop these out the bottom here. But yeah, guys, got the radiator out. All the accessories are still on it, but uh, really trying to do my best not to bust up the front bumper and the grill and all that stuff. So that's the reason I took the transmission out of the back. But yeah, so let's get her chained up and let's get this thing lifted out of the car.
All right, you guys, after a quick hydration break, we're back out here again, and it's time to start tearing this thing down. I am really anxious, really excited, a little bit terrified <laughs> to get into it, but you know, in all honesty, I mean, this thing ran pretty good. Um, we didn't have any like super, super bad issues on the track. It's just knowing the amount of stuff that we're gonna have to do to this block to get it to the horsepower and torque numbers that I'm hoping for. It's gonna cost a lot of money to do that. But we have a lot of parts on the way, so unless there's something extreme going on on the inside of this thing, we're gonna run it. So, but by run it, that comes after the complete teardown, reassembly, we're gonna reseal everything, we're gonna make it like new, we're gonna paint it, we're gonna do a whole lot of things to this, uh, this engine here. And uh, I'm excited to tell you guys all about the upgrades it's getting in a future episode. But just like we tore down the 383, we're going to start, get all the accessories off, get the distributor out, get the intake off, valve covers, we're going to get all the valve train out of it, and uh, yeah, have a look inside of them cylinder bores. So the only issue that I've seen so far, and I don't know if it's really an issue, but you know, with this thing sitting for so long, when I did, because uh, I've already replaced this water pump, um, the housing and then also the pump in the center here, Got all brand new antifreeze, and I think just with it sitting for a long time, um, it introduced some chocolate milk here on the top side of the uh, the water pump. So, don't know if that means that you know the thermostat was stuck, or if it's just the uh, the coolant cycling through the engine. Not too sure, but either way, everything is going to get disassembled, cleaned up, and uh, put back together if it's in good shape. So, I tell you what, one thing I did notice is how heavy this is on my engine stand. I did have to put a little kickstand here on the bottom <laughs> with a piece of wood because, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this thing's leaning pretty damn hard down. So we're gonna take quite a bit of weight off this thing here in the next few minutes. So let's get these parts off and let's have a look. <laughs>
Buddy, those cylinders look good. Oh yeah. Alrighty, so what we should see is a 4.32 bore for the 440. And it is... .319. So it is a stock bore, original motorhome 440. And again, I can see cross hatching on the inside of that. This thing is pretty low miles, pretty fresh. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> oh. Yep, 4.32. So. Awesome news. I just hope the other side is just as good. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's kind of rainbow white. It Hell yeah! Purple. It has purple on it. Yep, well that's from the gasket. Oh. Dude, it's in awesome shape, man. Alright, no marks, no nothing. chunks of the piston missing out of it, nothing like that. Hell freaking yeah, dude. Awesome! <laughs> Magical. <laughs> Alrighty, you guys, well, I have nothing but good news to report on my end, and thank goodness, because <laughs> this block is absolutely awesome. If you can't hear it on my voice, uh, yeah, you can definitely see it on my face. I'm pretty damn happy. But uh, everything came off super easy, <clears throat> um, which does lend me to believe that this block has been gone through. I do think it's been resealed. Now, I did the accessories and water pump and things like that. So obviously you can see all the blue RTV from me doing that, but um, I do think this did have a head gasket job done on it. It's definitely had an oil pan gasket done on it. There's probably a half a tube of RTV on that, <laughs> that damn oil pan. And uh, yeah, the intake, or excuse me, the, uh, the valve cover gaskets around the top of it. Typically these will kind of crumble off or break off um, or you'll have to chip them off. These are like super fresh. These are definitely not very old. Here's the head gaskets that I pulled off. I'm pretty sure these are Felpro gaskets. I could be wrong, but normally the blue is kind of the dead giveaway. But tell me what you guys think. But I do think this thing has been gone through. Now, it has not been bored. 
Like I mentioned earlier, this does has the, the original 4.32 uh, bore and all of the cylinders. Uh, does have flat top pistons, which I was surprised to see. I'm definitely not the most well-versed 440 guy in the world, um, but uh, normally with the motorhome, the low compression stuff, you always see like the dog dish style, which was in the 383 setup that we went through last week. But uh, T-Bone has lost my uh, feeler gauges. I'm pretty sure they're out in the yard somewhere that I'll run over with the lawnmower next year and I'll find them. But I will have to go pick up a set of feeler gauges to uh, to measure the uh, you know how far this is in the hole. It's that top dead center. It's definitely down there. Pretty good ways. But, you know, again, this is a motorhome 440. I'm not building this to be a complete crazy race engine. Okay, we're going to leave the pistons in it. I am going to put new bearings, new seals, new gaskets on everything. And it is getting a set of heads as well as a, um, you know, a nice cam and a full roller setup in this entire engine as well, along with the tunnel ram and... Yeah, again, we're throwing a lot of good parts at this thing. Should run awesome, should be very reliable, and most importantly, should be a ton of fun to drive. So what's next? Well, I'm gonna wrap this engine up tonight and we're probably gonna get started tomorrow on the metal work on the car. I will get all the parts ordered that I need for this. I've got most of them on the way already, but a couple other gasket seals, different things that I wanna um, address while we're you know this far torn down with the engine. But, uh, but yeah, guys, we're gonna jump straight into metal work and hopefully by the time that's all wrapped up, because we have a cage to do, we've got window channel repair to do, we've got this that ugly ass trunk pan to do as well. But hopefully by the time that's all wrapped up, all the goodies will be in. We can clean this thing up, assemble it, paint it, make it look like new and slap it back in the car. And I cannot wait to see that all in the car. So with that, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video right now. Thank you all so much for following along. I really, really enjoy sharing this stuff with you guys. I love hearing your feedback as well in the comments, so feel free to drop something below. And also, if you're considering going to Matt's in Las Vegas in March, you definitely should. It's going to be a lot of fun. You'll be able to see this car. It's making great progress. We should definitely make it. But uh, a whole lot of other really cool cars will be there as well. So you're not going to want to miss it. But take care, guys. I'll see you all again real soon.